nationwide leader in background checks and employment screening solutions. People G2 gives their clients access to the best human capital management and due diligence tools available. They are dedicated to helping their clients with all of their people-related decisions. To learn more, go to www.peopleg2.com. Talent Talk centers on the topics of talent recruitment and management, leadership development, company culture, and employee engagement. These are all timely topics for CEOs, entrepreneurs, HR professionals, and business leaders. We hope that as you tune in to listen each week, whether to the live broadcast or to the podcast on iTunes or iHeartRadio, that you hear something you can take away that will help you grow and impact your career in a positive way. And now, here's the host of the Talent Talk Radio Show, the founder and CEO of People G2, Chris Dyer. Welcome to Talent Talk Radio, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm excited to be back. We had a couple weeks off for just weird travel reasons and logistical things. And actually, it feels kind of weird to say that I've been traveling and I've been out in the world and seeing people, being around people. And now I have more anxiety about that than I ever did before. But you know, nonetheless, I'm around them and it's been fun. It's been good. And um, I didn't catch anything. So um, I'm here. We're, we're here talking and I have two fantastic guests lined up for you today to talk about all things talent, of course. And that is why this show exists, to talk about uh, how we manage our talent, how we can help people flex their talent, and of course, to learn from very talented people. Uh, and maybe get a secret, maybe find out something we can use, something special that we can take back to our house, to our work, to our friends group, to anywhere that we maybe need to be someone, someone fantastic today. So. Um, there's been so many wonderful stories that have come out of these conversations over the years. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to basically cherry pick the best of them and put them into books, which has been awesome, and take my experiences of running companies myself. And so if you're interested in, in learning more some of those stories about culture, I have a book called The Power of Company Culture, which is a bestseller back in 2018. And then we have a new bestseller that came out this year called Remote Work that my co-author Kim Shepard and I worked on very hard and then COVID happened and we had to rewrite the whole thing and now it's a totally different book. So uh, enjoy that book as well, all available on Amazon and we will continue to collect awesome stories and who knows, maybe we'll do something else with all of that one day as well. Talent Talk is live every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are now on, besides being on uh, live on the radio uh, through OC Talk Radio, we are also live on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So if you hang out in any of those places, you can go there and hang out with us and ask questions and talk to us and leave comments there. But we are also live tweeting on Twitter. So if you want to be part of more of the, the written short form conversation, uh, you can do that there as well at PeopleG2 or the hashtag talent talk is a great way. We tag our guests. You can tell us how wrong or right we are about something or suggest we check out other resources or books and things like that. It's a lot of fun. So um, love to have you do that. And my social media uh, coordinator, Angela, will feed us any good questions that come in live during the show as well, which does happen from time to time. And we always enjoy it. Okay, my guest today first will be uh, Jill Katz. She's a Assemble HR Consulting uh, LLC founder and a chief change officer. Uh, and then, uh, oh, and the CEO uh, therapist. Oh, sorry. Then we'll have the, the CEO therapist, Glenn uh, Gao, excuse me. Um, if I could read today, it probably would help. Um, but let's go ahead and get uh, started and bring in my first guest so I can stop talking and, and fumbling over my words. Uh, Joe, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, why don't you tell everyone a little bit more about you, what's important for us to know about who you are, your journey, what you focus on, what you're passionate about, and you know, maybe why people are willing to spend money with you. Well, the first thing is, I should tell you, Chris, today is my wedding anniversary, and I'm here spending it with you. How's that? Well, you, you well, I will not make a bad joke. Congratulations. No. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so, how many years? Do you know how many years it's been? I do. As, as a okay. wonderful wife, I have to start off by saying happy 19 years to my wow. amazing, perfect husband, Josh. And it has been 19 years of perfection and bliss. Um, so not one fight, not one disagreement. It's always been perfect. Fantastic. 
He agrees. <laughs> he agrees with everything I say. Oh no, um, not that narrative. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I like to tell people first and foremost, I am a proud and happy mother of two incredible young people. I have a daughter who is 15. She is a basketball star, a fantastic student, a great friend, goes to sleepaway camp and loves it. I have a son, he's 12 years old, and his dream in life is to be on Broadway. And I gotta wow. tell you something, presuming Broadway stays open again, we hope, uh, I think, who knows, he, he may in fact make it happen. I am a dog lover. I am, as I said, a, a wife, working hard to, to stay there. Um, and I am a person who started my career 2,500 years ago. Right, right. In human resources. Before you're even married. All right. Before I was even born. <laughs> and I have spent my entire career in the field. Wow, you came out of the womb with a continuing education credits already assigned to your name. You're ready to go. Uh, so fantastic. Um, you know, uh, congratulations on your wedding anniversary, first and foremost. Um, and I, I know uh, it's not easy. I, my, my wife and I uh, started dating at 16. So we've been together longer than we haven't been together, um, which seems like a lot of, long, long time. I will admit we have disagreed a few times along the way. Well, um, but, I mean, yeah. so you're, that means if you started in your 16, you guys have been together, what, eight, eight years, nine years? Right, right. I love your math. I love yeah, your math. That's yeah. incredible. Congratulations. That's right. great. <laughs> so uh, how did you end up in human resources? I was this is an interesting career path. Some people go to school and they're like, I'm an HR person. That's what I want to do. And other people go to school for something else. And then they just suddenly... I don't know, stumble in or realize, geez, I really like doing this part of the business. So what was that journey for you? So what's really interesting and maybe even embarrassing, but, but I'll start by outing myself right now. When I graduated from college, human resources was not even a major. There, there was no such thing at that time. So I graduated from the University of Michigan and my very first job out of college, I worked for an organization and I was what was called at the time a sales coordinator. That was my very first job. And it was a great job. I was in a sales training program. And in this program, we rotated around in a very, very large global and well-known organization learning how to sell the product of this company. And we learned a little bit about marketing, about client service, and about sales. And just to sort of set the context, at the time there was no email and all of sales happened using a fax machine. So that helps us kind of set the context. During this process, when I got the job, I was wooed into the job from school because this was back in the days that school, that there was campus recruiting and it was really easy and fancy to get a job while still in college. And then when I was in the sales program, I got involved with what was called the personnel department. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to help recruit the next incoming class of sales coordinators. I thought, wow, this is fun. And maybe I can help them find the next group that will come and go through this program. So I went down to the office of the head of personnel and I said, I would love to help. They said, great, we need a couple of account coordinators to help us. And I became involved. I helped with some of the recruiting efforts and I got really big involved in what was called headquarters week. By the end of headquarters week, I had personally recruited and converted more incoming account coordinators than all of the people who were in what was called the personnel department at that time. And I thought, huh, this is more fun to me and more interesting <laughs> than the work I'm doing in the sales department. So I walked down the hall and I sat down with the head of 
personnel at the time, and I'll forever, Chris, remember this meeting for my entire life. And I said, I want to be in your department. And she said, no. We need you, Jill, to stay in sales. That's the most important place. We recruited you into our sales development program, and we want you to follow that track. And besides, you can't change jobs until you've been in that job for two years. <laughs> we remember those days. And so yeah. like most 22-year-olds, I said, okay. And I left that job and I took my first HR job when I was 22 or 23 years old. By leaving that company and getting a job in an HR department, and I have never left the field. So there's so many lessons there that I hope our listeners are picking up on, right? You you followed a bit of passion. You're curious and willing to try something new, to go and help out, even if it didn't really benefit you. It wasn't something that you weren't trying to step up any particular ladder. You just, hey, I have energy. I'm going to go do this thing. I'm going to try it out. It worked out great. And then you went, I love it. I want to do more of it. And then when advocated and asked for that job that you wanted, and you know, it doesn't always work out. There are a lot of really dumb companies with a lot of really dumb rules that are meant for somebody put in place for some foreseeable good reason a long time ago. And I think companies are a bit more agile now. They're willing to, to think about uh, recognizing that kind of passion and realizing to have someone special there. But I think so often people don't even do those limited things that you just talked about, right? They're not willing to try something new. They don't volunteer or, or go outside of their lane. Um, and then when they find happiness somewhere, they're not necessarily advocating for that. Um, maybe they wait until they're so mad and so disgruntled, they finally leave, and then they stop to reflect on what do I really want to do? And at that point, you're kind of, you've kind of added a few pounds to your backpack that you're carrying up a very big hill, right? When you could have done it when you were walking on a nice flat plain or even downhill, um, you make it harder on yourself. So um, I, I sort of think, think this transitions to my next question, which is maybe this was you also making it harder on yourself. I know you worked for years then for just a few years, uh, really, really big brands and, and big organizations with a lot of success. And then you decided again, to leave and go start Assemble HR for yourself. So what kind of, what was the impetus for that, right? To say, now I'm not anymore going to do this thing for other people. I'm going to go do this on my own or for myself. So Chris, I, I had such an incredible career. I wouldn't change a minute of it. I was ambitious and curious both at levels that were truly insatiable. And in the, my goodness, 20 plus years that I had the opportunity to practice human resources, the field changed tenfold. Right. I got to do HR in multiple industries in technology, in retail, in entertainment, in media, in consumer packaged goods. I worked in organizations that were startups, in massive public companies, in private companies, in owner founder led organizations. In the time that I got to be in the field, I really got to sort of try everything, work everywhere. I was in one person HR, teams when I was the whole team myself and I mm -hmm. did everything. And I also got to lead massive organizations. And by the time I got to a certain role, I was really happy. I had had all the success, all the titles, all the financial reward I wanted. I realized at some point that I had spent a really long time pushing people out of their personal comfort zone, helping people find the very best of themselves in their career. And there was one person who I was consistently ignoring. That person had become incredibly unhealthy, physically, mentally. That person was never seeing her children. Mm. That person was living a level of stress that was really unhappy. 
Right. And that person was in my mirror every morning. And what that looked like in real practice was myself plus about 80 pounds. That was me working till eight, nine o'clock every night in New York City, taking a car service home and getting home after my children were asleep. I was never seeing my kids. And I was realizing, my gosh, I'll have a lot of money in the bank, but I will have kissed away all of the best years of my life. Right. And so I thought to myself, the one thing I'm not accomplishing is me. Yeah, you're out there developing all these other people and developing the company. You're not developing yourself, right? Or, or your family for that matter, right? Your kids and all of that. So uh, that, 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 that kind of realization can be really, really difficult. Was it one of those snaps? Kind of like wow you just like someone lifted a spell or was it more of a long term finally coming to grips with you know that you needed to change it was a series of events there were multiple moments along the way that i felt really crummy i felt really really crummy and i thought i gotta go do this and i kept walking to the edge of the cliff and saying oh you know, this person went out on, on his own and, and started his or her own company. And then she went out on her own and look at their success. And I kept walking to the edge of the cliff and saying, I want to try this. And, oh, I'm too scared. And I went back and sat down at my desk because my desk in my company was safe. And I was making mm -hmm. a great living and, and, it, and it was comfortable and I felt successful and I knew what to do. And I have been what I thought was a relatively risk averse person and taking a risk that big, I could have given you every reason in the world why it was a bad idea or a bad time or maybe in six months or maybe next year. But every excuse was standing in my way and one bad situation after another after another and there came one point where ultimately one day i thought to myself oh my gosh i might have a heart attack or my daughter might leave for college and say i never saw my mom or or this or that or this or that and there were multiple things and so one day i just quite frankly ripped off the band-aid and i i left my job it was terrifying <laughs> and in a period of one year, I started the company. I lost 77 pounds. Wow. That's a lot in one year. It's a lot. And I mean, you were in a prison camp, that would be a lot, let alone out in the real world. So, wow. I just said, I'm going to live a different life. And yeah. I have never looked back. You know, I, I, again, I just, so the listeners can maybe think about this in different components. There's sort of, I think there's two ways, and I mentioned that earlier with my, in my question. I think there's those moments where you feel like someone lifted a spell on you. There's an immediate spark, an immediate, I need to go, I'm going this way, I need to go that way. And I think people need to really be cognizant of those and be aware of those moments that pop in their head and not ignore them, right? And, and, I, I've often noticed some very successful people consistently will say this. I had that moment and I changed directions and I went this other way. And I'll talk to people who would categorize themselves as not successful and complain that they haven't achieved what they want. And I've asked them if they had these moments and they basically admitted they did, but they didn't do anything about it, right? They just kept going the same way because it was safe, because it was easy. And then there's those other moments that you, how your thing was, which it was, it was over a period of time. It was, you got... Maybe life didn't hit you with a bus, but they were, certainly were hitting you with a couple of baseballs along the way until you finally went, okay, okay, I get it. You know, this isn't going to work anymore. I'm going to have to, to do something different. Um, both require a lot of reflection. Both require a lot of um, conversations. So I'm, the other things that I'm curious about is once you made that decision, was this something so clear to you that you just went and did it and sort of didn't really talk to anyone about it? Or did you go back and really have to digest and consume and talk to a lot of people to really feel like you were aligned before you could make that next leap? This life has been living deep, deep, deep down in my stomach for most of my life and probably for 
five years before I actually did it. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the last maybe six years of my career when I was working in a corporate environment were really difficult for me. The benefit was I loved my job. I loved what I got to do. I worked with such smart, amazing human beings. But what I learned about my role as a very, very senior HR person in retail at that time was that the higher I got in an organization, the more time I ended up spending at that time mm -hmm. involved in reorganizations and reductions in force. And so to say that in an overly simplistic way, I felt like I was being paid a lot of money to fire people. And it was tearing me apart, Chris. So you all, everyone remembers that movie. I think it was called Up in the Air with George Clooney, where he was being paid a ton of money and he was flying from place to place and he was letting people go. Yeah. And it was just around that same time that that movie came out. And my friends were saying to me, oh, have you seen the movie? That's so <laughs> funny. It reminds me of you. Right. And I was this, saying, this terribly depressed character is going on fire and like, that reminds you of me? Great. <laughs> it's not, there's nothing about that movie that's funny. I hate the movie. I hate the, the <laughs> thanks for the comparison. And I remember that period of time, like I have to, I gotta, I gotta get out of this. And so to answer your question and looking back, I remember feeling nothing other than freedom, relief just air out of the balloon and and that the work i was doing was helping that for me to be paid money to quite frankly take someone's job away didn't feel good but instead to be paid money to help someone grow mm -hmm. build create change that is what I have always been meant to do. And that's what I wanted to do. So I never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know totally what you're talking about. There's this energy around what you're doing. And I remember early on when I started you know, speaking, people would have me speak about uh, background checks and compliance. And they were always very interested in having me talk about that. But it was boring and scary. Like I, I didn't, no one left my talk going, wow, I'm inspired or what. And I never left the talk going, I inspired people that no, I left them like freaking out or, or sleeping because it's boring content. <laughs> right. And, and then I changed talking about culture and engagement and remote work, things I'm very passionate about. And suddenly people are inspired. People want to have a, you know, you, it was a totally different feeling, right. About what's, what, what, what are you, where are you taking someone? So I totally get what you're saying. Right. You, you can get paid all the money in the world, but if what you're doing every day is just ruining people's days and, and you feel terrible about your their day and your day and your life, and what's the point, right? You're, what's the point? Well, I, we're almost out of time. I can't believe it's gone by so quickly. Um, really important question. How can people find out more about you? Where can they find you on the interwebs or reach out to, to learn out more or become a client or whatever it is uh, they want to do? What's the best way for them to do that? We are ever findable. The name of our company is Assemble HR. We are hrassemble.com. I'm on LinkedIn, Jill Katz, J-I-L-L-K-A-T-Z. We're also at HR Assemble on Instagram. Um, and my email is jill at hrassemble.com. Well, she's always putting out great stuff on LinkedIn. So make sure you go and connect with her there. Follow her and her company. And certainly if anyone needs your type of services, I'm sure you'll do a fantastic job for them. Jill, we must have you come back and get through the other 9,000 questions we had for you that we didn't get to, but the conversation was too good with where we were at. So it just, it just sometimes it happens. So it's great. We'll have you come back and we'll talk more about leadership and candor and courage and all the other things I know you're an expert on um, next time. Does that sound good? Terrific. It was great to meet you and spend time. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break, and we'll bring in our second guest, uh, Glenn, Glenn Gow. Thanks, Chris.
Imagine buying a newspaper and discovering that the news you're reading is six months old. There isn't much that stays the same for six months. And the same thing goes for background checks. In a time when so much outdated information is being passed around, it's good to know that People G2 offers something different. At People G2, we provide today's intelligence, not yesterday's news. Our value-added approach offers you a fully FCRA-compliant solution that includes up-to-the-minute information. By combining industry-leading technology with old-school human investigation, People G2 is able to give you information that is accurate right now, delivered quickly to our online system or integrated with your HR system. So ask yourself, are you comfortable working with old news or are you ready for a different kind of background check company? Visit PeopleG2.com or call 800-630-2880. That's 800-630-2880 or PeopleG2.com. The Wooden Floor is a nationally recognized, award-winning nonprofit that gives underserved Orange County youth the tools to live fuller, healthier lives through a unique approach grounded in dance. The Wooden Floor makes a long-term investment in these young people, providing free intensive dance education supported by academic and family services. The result is students graduate high school and attend college at a rate about three times greater than their peers. Find out more at thewoodenfloor.org. Whoa, a digital music player. Thanks, Mom. Glad you like it. We can finally toss out that old massive stereo. Mom, you can't just throw out electronics. They need to be recycled or donated. Recycled? Like aluminum cans? Yeah, you just go to greenergadgets.org, enter your zip code, and it tells you where the nearest certified recycling center is. Um, I knew that. Okay, Mom. Recycling electronics is as easy as buying them. Log on to greenergadgets.org to find electronics recycling options near you. It takes 12 years to create a graduate. It takes about the same time to create a dropout. And at the end of the day, the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be you. So United Way is asking you to make a pledge. Tutor a child who needs help. Mentor a kid who needs someone on their side. Volunteer to read to children. Because when a child advances, we all advance. Be a reader. Tutor or mentor. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge now at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Corey Frank, co-host of the Market Dominance Guys and of Uncommon Pro, wants you to consider Maggie's Place. Maggie's Place welcomes pregnant and parenting women and their children into a safe and loving community, providing life-changing programs and ongoing services to help them become self-sufficient. You can learn more at maggiesplace.org or consider helping another shelter near you that serves these same vulnerable women and their children. Okay, and now back to our show. Well, it looks like we maybe have had some sort of issue or disconnect with our second guest, so we'll try to get him rebooked onto the show. Thank you, everyone, for who tuned in today. Hopefully, you uh, learned something and you, you can use in your own career in a positive way. Don't forget to follow at PeopleG2, hashtag Talent Talk, and interact with us on all the different platforms. We'll have the podcast out uh, next week, and we'll be back, I believe, live next week as well. So. Thanks, everyone, and we will uh, see you soon. You've been listening to Talent Talk Radio, brought to you by People G2.